city set on a hill. So I was saying that we had a lot of uh, concerns in the last couple of weeks. At some point, yesterday, as leaders, we were supposed to have a meeting, an administrative meeting. While some of us were praying for that meeting, the Lord told us to shut it down. That we should go check the state of the flock that he has committed under us. Yes, we are praying. Yes, we are fasting. But one of the errors of Cain was not just that his sacrifice was not acceptable. When the Lord asked him, Cain, Cain, where is your brother? He said, am I my brother's keeper? So this morning, the posture we are adopting as a house is that we are our brother's keeper. Tap your neighbor said, I am, I am my brother's keeper. I am your keeper. So ask, if you are their keeper, ask them how they are doing. Ask them. Ask them, how are you doing? How are you doing? Do you have fuel, do you have fuel in your car? Were you able to get fuel last week? Ask them, ask them. Please ask them. How did the grocery shopping go? Were you surprised? Yeah? Ask them, do you have something to break your fast today? Ask your neighbor. I'm serious. Ask them. Do you have food to break your fast today? In the morning, we started singing, How are you, my friend? And somebody just thought, oh, Pastor Judas gone canna. How do you do, my friend? I know sometimes he be like say nobody send you. I did I did for you, my friend. You just made a commitment, oh! You just made a commitment, Lagos people, now to visit. Some people say. For me, instead of me to visit you, let me, can I send you money? That's how, that's how it gets gangster. But in this season, we are going to t- change that script. In the period of famine and intense hardship, people tend to become selfish. People tend to become, go, become insular and self-preservative. So they begin to keep. But what the Bible recommends in season like this is that you disperse. It says that there is, there's one that gathers and tends to nothing, but there's one that, yeah, you know that scripture, right? Give me that scripture. That's why that's I said, cast your bread upon the waters. After many, you will find it. In this kingdom, it's downside up. Whenever you're experiencing lack, begin to give. Do you understand what I mean? I said, whenever, whenever you are afraid, Take a bold stance. Begin to do courageous things. The way up in this kingdom, yes, and the way down, try to put yourself up. He says, anyone that exalts himself, God said, I will resist him. I resist the proud. So the kingdom is quite interesting. So after service today, I'll make the call later. If you know, you really need to speak with someone. I, I had an online check-in yesterday. The pastors made the call. We canceled our meeting. And everyone was asked to divide their unit into groups. If you didn't get a call, maybe we'll ask you whether you have a unit. But, you know, or maybe your pastor didn't do his work or her work. But <laughs> you're still calling. Uh, <laughs> pastor Bolade is still ongo- is ongoing. You know, I will ask for a dossier after now. But we, the idea is, if you need to speak with someone, please, after service, don't rush away. If you don't have food at home, in the, old, in the New Testament church, after Jesus left, the Bible said that they sold land, they brought the money to church, and they gave to the ones that did not have, so that none of them were, were what? Lacking. So, People have in the first service said, Pastor Jude, I'm willing to donate to the cost of alleviating the pain of people in this season. And we are making an open call. After service, you need to speak with the pastor. 
you need to, you have, you are in a tight spot. I was speaking with a brother two days ago. He said, I got to the point of depression. I went into my room and I began to cry. I said, God forbid that it will be on our watch. You will be depressed or suicidal. Because, you see, let me tell you, most of these things that you are seeing, right? How do I say this? Without reducing the pain of people. I tell you, it is actually more fluff than substance. I'll tell you why I say this. Somebody said to me during the online check-in yesterday that one of the things I've done this season is to guard my heart. We're speaking about a city set on a hill. He said, I've, I, I have decided to guard my heart. And I remember the story of one of my friends. She called me and said, this season we need to be careful of what we look at in social media. She had been bombarded earlier in the day with status of how expensive eggs have become. So it was time for her to make breakfast for her children. She had brought out, I think, three eggs, and then she returned one. I said, no, but it's, normally it's three we use for this pancake. Now she, she went back and got it. And when she got there, she remembered egg has in, the price of increased. She, re, she returned one. At some point, she had to rebuke the spirit of poverty. She said, get out of my mind. Because I know that family, egg can never be their problem. You know what I'm talking about. But because of the information, the barrage of information, they say, ah, Dollar is now 1,009. What are you doing with that? Let those who are changing dollars be speaking with who they need to speak to. If you don't have any interaction with dollars, why are you dying the debt before it comes to you? What I'm trying to say is that we are the city set on a hill. We are the light. If we are the light, darkness is the perfect backdrop for our light to shine. If you believe it, let your amen be loud. So, if you are genuinely in a tight spot, we got a call the other day. They were, they were trying to evict one of us, committed sister, and we rallied. We rallied. It's not a call for laziness, but it's not a call for lack of planning. You are genuinely in a tight spot, or you don't even need help from the church. You want to speak with a pastor. A couple of people came after second service. The, even, the prayer was a bit different. People are owing me. Can, can, can we join faith? So all the pastors, we sat, we were one-on-one we were -on -one with people after service. Can we join faith? My money is tied up here. So it's not that when you are waiting means that you need food. Pastor, join faith with me that they'll pay me. And we have prayed for some people, we know they'll come back with testimony. That they are, they are, the people they are owing them will be willing and able. In Jesus' name. Amen. A city set on a hill. I don't want to preempt myself. But I was saying earlier that this is the perfect backdrop for our light to shine. You know, presence does not mean um, essence of existence. Jesus was alive 30 years. But it got to a point before he began to say, I am the light of the world. He came to that point where Kairos met preparation. The Bible says, and the boy grew in favor with men and with God. He, when that set time came, he went to the Jordan River. The Lord God opened the heavens, sent his spirit in form of a dove, and said, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. From that point, Jesus understood his nature. He understood his assignment. He knew his mission. And he kept declaring, I am the door. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the light. I am the light of the world. He kept declaring declaring it. And what I've come to share with you today, if you can help me with my slide media, is that you are a city set on a hill. You are a city set on a hill. And somebody said, amen. Somebody said what? Amen. What does that mean? The book of Matthew chapter 5. Jesus was speaking on the Sermon on the Mount. He, has started, he started this conversation from around you know, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are they that mourn, for they will be comforted. And he has said all those virtues that makes you intrinsically a child of God and a representation of God here on earth. And then he, he got to a point, he now said, you are the light of the world. You are the light of Nigeria. The, the comfort that God has about this nation Believe me, I believe in this country in, my, in every, every of my consciousness. In my waking moment, in my sleeping. Why? 
Why do I believe? Because you are here. Because you are here. He said, to, he said you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. So I, I bring you good news. That this, what we are going through, the constrictions we are going through. When I asked a young man, because on the... In, Instagram check-in yesterday, I was pulling people to join me. I pulled one of the young men here, and I asked him, how are you surviving this season? He said, I guard my heart, because God prepared us for this season. I said, how so? He said, the cross of a night, the Lord told us. He gave us a word. I belong to a church where the Lord preempts what is to come. He said, he has made us as sore-footed as a deer. So we knew the year you will need to shore up yourself. So I reinforced my mind. Oh, I, I, uh, I you blessed me yesterday. He said, I, I, I form a guard around my mind. And when I hear these things, I go back to the word, the word and I pay into the, the word. word. I make I a make comparison. comparison. That, that is, is a city, city set on a hill. My case is different. You are the, you are the light of the world. What does light do? Light brightens. Light illuminates. Light sets a course. Light is the model, the prototype to follow. So this is not a season for you to join the bandwagon. If you don't have what to discuss, keep quiet. Don't spoil our fasting and prayer with your negative confession. Oh, we are finished. You are not finished anywhere. You, you take us backwards with those words. So you stay in faith. I don't know why I'm preempting myself, but I feel an urgency to begin to go to the meat of the matter. You are a city set on a hill. I was saying to some of them in the, early, in, in the first service, I asked a young man recently, what do you do for work? He said, I'm a tutor. I'm a lesson tutor. And I looked at him. I, I knew there must be a twist to it. I said, tell me about it. He said, I teach Nigerian languages online to foreigners. So the dimension I've gone into now is that I recruit people because of the demand. I recruit people to work with me. We schedule. You think that person is worrying about efforts? They pay him in in all the currencies in the world. I said money does not disappear. It just moves. And someone said, if you want to hit a moving target, you don't aim at where it was. You don't aim at where he, it is. You aim at where it's moving to. You are the light of the world. Jesus was speaking. He recalled that Isaiah had said, in the book of Isaiah, that darkness surrounds the people. Darkness surrounds the earth and gross darkness, the people. But he said, what did he say? He said to you, arise, shine, for your light has come. How? The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. So this, your fast must count for something. It must translate into something. Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. When Jesus began to say, I am the light of the earth. I am the light of the world. He was beginning to fulfill the scripture. As was written in the book of Matthew chapter 4. It says the land of Zebulon. The land of Naphtali. The city Galilee by the sea. He said the people that sat in darkness have seen a great light. So how do I move? What is my consciousness this season? When I show up in a place, I will just say the people that sat in darkness proud to my coming, they have seen a great light. Who is the great light? I am the great light. When I come into a situation, I don't join them to mourn. I don't join them to confess negativity. I go to the Lord and say, Lord, what will you have me do? This is a season of light. Oh, I've heard some very interesting testimonies as we journeyed on this fast. Men have found out that when you give yourself to the divine, the Lord begins to open up to you the secrets of his kingdom. So, don't get it twisted. There can be darkness all over the people, but you are called to shine your light within your own sphere. What that means is that the rules of engagement for you is different. You might play in the same field with them. Oh, I don't tell you what I don't know. Don't, don't get it twisted. I don't tell you what I don't know. We made quotations to accompanying in December. And 
believe me, we've had to re-engineer and look at it again several. So, don't, don't, the realities are there. But what we are saying is that we tower above it. It is despite the realities. We superimpose the position of God. Oh, you, and you say, Pastor Jude, I've been praying. Yes, we keep praying. We keep placing that demand before heaven. That this season is time for my light to shine. So he said, the people that sat in darkness, they have found a great light. So what does it mean to be a city set on a hill? How can an individual be a city? Yes, you can. Jesus said it. In the Old Testament, we saw men who became institutions. Abraham was an institution. Abraham will show up in a place. The king will begin to shake. Oh, Abraham at some point started making accommodating plans. That putting together plans that will help the kings not to be intimidated when he comes into their country. He went to a land as big as Egypt. He had to start crafting plans of what to do. Men were made institutions. Men became, they became cities. Oh, he was looking for a city whose builder and, and maker was God. But God was making him that city. So that when he gave birth to his son Isaac, Isaac got the same. Isaac went amongst the Philistines. The Bible says that the Philistines were wondering, all our oil wells have dried up. But Isaac's oil well is, Isaac's water well is just bubbling. And the Bible says the Philistines, they envied him. They will block it. Oh, somebody saying to me, Pastor Jude, they revoked my license. The things are not good. I said they blocked, they brought stones and they covered Isaac's well. But the Lord said to Isaac, move, keep moving. I believe, you know, Isaac was a man of prayer. I believe in prayer, he will find the next spot. He will tell his men, dig here. And the Bible said when they dig, they find water. Meanwhile, the owners of the land could not access water. You see, sometimes it's about the light you carry. Don't, don't, don't get into the bandwagon effect. Me too is not a good place to be. If you want to stand out in this season, you must understand that you carry a unique identity. Something has been engineered into your DNA code. You are light. So that when you go to bed at night and things are not working the way they should, that is a perfect opportunity for your, for your brilliance to come to the fore. Imagine that when the king in Babylon gathered all the magicians and said to them, I had a dream. The dream is significant. All of you, tell me the dream and tell me the interpretation. You know, all of them said, King, you have asked us a hard thing. If you want to, if you are looking for an excuse to kill us, just kill us. Right? How can we tell you your dream and tell you the interpretation? But suddenly they said, there is a man called Daniel. They went to him. They said to him, the king had a dream. He doesn't know the interpretation. Daniel did not say, oh my show. This king has been looking for how to kill all of us, all of us that are immigrants, all of us that are foreigners. Daniel said, give me one night. Just give me one night. Daniel understood that a city set on a hill. Did you see the key word for that verse is a city set on a hill. That city was deliberately placed there. There was a timing to the relevance of that city. Daniel knew this is the set time for me. He didn't run away from the challenges. So they are, they are beginning to push some difficult tax to you at work. It's a setup for promotion. But you are complaining about a wicked boss. Hear me, child of God. Let me tell you the secret of Daniel. Daniel turned to the wall and said, God, show me the king's dream. You are the one who went into his subconscious and troubled him with a dream. That guy was a, you know, the king was a rascal. He was a drunk. He was, he was just always having parties. But for him to have a dream and know the dream was significant, God, you must have put it in his mind. So God, tell me the dream and give me the interpretation. I can imagine how Daniel walked the next day when he had both the dream and the interpretation when he walked to the palace. The darkness that you see is a perfect setup. What you should go, just tell your colleagues, tell your board, tell your, give me one week. We are about to round up our past. First, when I pray, God speaks to me. When I close my eyes at night, he gives me codes. 
I, I don't know. I sense that God is causing some people to break up, break forth in the export business. Your unique selling potential, your unique selling point will be divinely revealed to you. In the place of prayer, some people in fintech will be getting divine ideas because wealth makes themselves wings and they fly away. But what we are posturing for as a house is that when this wealth fly, they will locate our addresses in the name of Jesus. There's no room for pity party. There's no room. If you suffer the loss, dust yourself up. Gather your team again. And employ the, the strategy of Isaac. Dig again. Take them to the next location. Tell them, oh, the Philistines have covered that well. Dig again. Tell your neighbor, dig again. I sense that somebody here, you are feeling tired. You have no reason feeling tired. You are a city set on a hill. Let me tell you the attributes of a city set on a hill. The first attribute of a city set on a hill is that a city set on a hill is visible. Very visible. You can't miss it. Once you are within certain perimeters of France, you see the Eiffel Tower. You can't miss it. Once you are within certain places, they put a landmark. Why? It is the iconic structure that is placed there. It is the reference point. You are you, you cannot be missed this season. Oh, child of God, I, that was an, a good amen point. I said you cannot be missed this season. See, when, when they are looking for people with answers, may your name come to their mind. In the name of Jesus. In the morning, we, we wanted to get an AKA for this church. We call this church Jesus Embassy. We call this church Kingdom Embassy. Why? Because a unique, a unique calling and anointing was given to the set man. He, he was one of those that took the Pentecostalism to the marketplace and began to train professionals. When, when a lot of people thought that church people were no good as. But this man, he sat with them. The man of God sat with them. And he healed ordinary men into mighty men of David. I say you are sitting in an embassy. If you are in this church, your life is on a trajectory where you are a city set on a hill. I tell you, every weekend, I get messages. See, you know why we have too many pastors? We have, we have a lot of pastors. You know why we have too many pastors? Because this is an embassy. This, even this morning. Weekends, I just get a call. Pastor Jude, I have delegated to my assistant because I need to take a function in London. I need to take, I need to go for a board meeting in France because we are mobile like that and we have the gift of goodbye in this church. When we feel we have trained you and you come, and we are not like those people that will keep you back. We will release you because you are like an arrow shot out. I say you are a city set on a hill. You are visible. You are identifiable. They will come for you. They will come. They will see some people you don't even know. They will reach out to you through LinkedIn. They will come. They will ask you you say, how did you carry out that project for World Bank? How did you do that or that one? But I've heard some strange testimonies. People who were in their sitting room and they came to poach them. In this period, people are saying that there's no work, there's no work. See, be careful what you confess. They came to poach them. As I am now, I know people who are looking for certain professionals. You know, I sit at the gate and they come to me, oh, Pastor Jude, I'm looking for a CEO. I'm looking, see, there are jobs. You just need to identify as that person that can do that job. One, that job, one, you need to build your competence. And secondly, you need to see yourself as having that amount of value. Some of you don't know you can work for international organizations. You don't even have the idea that you can be in Nigeria and you can hold four jobs in different countries and you are delivering value even more than those that clock in every day in that same country. Oh, I have a lot of young folks that I mentor. They just, they just, they just, especially those in IT. They have one job in, in California, the other in Vancouver, the other in, in Canada. And the guy is in his house in Houston. He's in his house in Houston. One day I asked one of them, how do you take meetings? He said, I schedule them. See, when you have value, you tell them what time works for you. He, he, he said, I schedule them as it fits my timing. And when they give meetings to deliver on, I deliver before the expectation. 
I'm telling you that you are a city set on the hill and that this season God is shooting you out to the world. So when people are complaining about FX, what you should go and ask God, how do I earn in all the currencies in the world? How do I monetize my value? Some of you have written children books. You have written story books. You don't know that you can put your books on Amazon and sell them and you'll be sleeping and you'll be making passive income. Some of us are sitting on huge creative works that God has given to us. After this fast, you, it will be an unforgivable sin for you to remain the same. So therefore, in the name of Jesus, your boundaries are broken. In the name of Jesus, the glass ceilings are shattered. In the name of Jesus. The second thing about the city on the hill is that it is, it operates from a position of strength. It's imposing. You know that, that house that's at the entrance of this village? It's imposing. It's, visible. it's imposing. You know, even in its construction, because you are going to put the house at a height, it is exposed to the element. That's the third point. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm, I'm, I'm going to stay there for a bit. It is exposed to the element. For all that, all that, some of you are asking, why is it that my own is always different? I'm always fighting. There's always war. I'm always, other people will just do. It's because the, the kind of harvest God is preparing you for. It's not other people's kind of harvest. You know, other houses can just dig. They can do what they call those light uh, foundations. Is it raft? Uh, is it, they call it, where they build other people? They call it raft or whatever. They do a simple foundation. But when, when you are building a city on the hill, because it will be exposed to the element, you go down. You drill down. That's why we're fasting. Why do you think we're fasting? Why do you think we're praying? So that when we come into the place of prayer, we are building strength. The city set on a hill operates from the position of strength. You, 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 don't, see, you don't see war and begin to cry. In fact, they, they say that when there is no war in the country, the, the soldiers are restless. They, they are wondering, they're wondering, when can they, okay, when there's no more, they will go to their organs. They say, send us to Ekomok. Send us to Liberia, where there is war. Because how, what are we doing in the barrack? So for, for, for goodness sake, we, when you build strength in the days that there are no war, you, you, you can't wait. When the devil comes with those things, ah, it, it triggers some excitement in you. How do you build strength? You build strength in prayer. You build strength in prayer. Sometimes, some of us just think that prayer is one activity you tick off. But this house, we have emphasized it. That the reason that we know we are a governmental church is that we are a church given to pray. Many people, yeah, yeah, kick, 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 like, you don't want to ask. We ask people to come and take simple Bible study. They will take days to fast. They are waiting on God. Say, oh God, what do I say to them? Oh God, what do I say to them? When they now come out and they begin to speak, they spit out fire. I was at recharge on Wednesday and and Pastor Shei Bella, Pastor um, Rolakia Kikube, and Pastor Ayo, when the ladies began to speak about dominion by influence, you, the words were coming from their mouth and hitting us in the face as though you, because they have built strength in the place of prayer. This is a season where you are going to de, de, is it demolish your prayer altar the way it is and re-erect a, a stronger one. Amen. I like that amen you will erect a stronger one. Because the city set on a hill is exposed to attack. You have strength based on your, your height. It's easier to combat from a higher realm. That's why when the devil tries you, take him to your realm. Don't fight him at his realm. And you, know, you know, when I see people bicker, you fight dirty, you fight office... You fight office fight with, you, you match gossip for gossip. You, I, I will report, you go and report. Uh, uh, you, you went to tell the boss this, that you two go and look for your story. You are fighting at their level. Be like the eagle. When the eagle wants to torture his, his opponent, the eagle knows that if I fight with this snake on, on ground, the snake has advantage. So the eagle will pick the snake and take the snake to a height. When he gets to that height, you will leave him. Let's see how you will fight here. In fact, they say there's a height the eagle will take even some other birds. They can't breathe. They can't breathe. So when 
when uh, it was a pastor that taught me something, he would tell some people, I will see you. I will meet you at 12 midnight. What that 12 midnight, I'm not coming to your house. I'm in my altar. Venda leta fiska. Paske faluda gadi. Brake tokas go vekedi. Maske vagoko ligaya. Learn to pray and tarry. When you start, it will sound mechanical at some point. But just stay there. Don't move. Don't leave. Man, like at, at the beginning, your mind will be wandering. But after at the beginning, you'll be thinking, okay, after now I'll go to work. But I tell you, when you enjoy when you employ that technology for another 10 minutes, what will happen is that your spirit begins to gain ascendancy over your flesh, over your mind realm. You go be and you add a song out of my belly shall flow rivers, rivers of living waters. And then you, you, you continue out of my belly shall flow rivers rivers of living waters and you continue you are picking the prey you are picking your opponent and you are taking them to the realm where they can't breathe or city in that realm you are, it's not, you don't need, it's not oxygen you need to survive. You need something called spirit. And if they don't have spirit, when they get there, they'll be gasping for bread. Many times you turn your back to your enemies because you have not prosecuted time of tarrying in the presence of God. Can I tell you what made this house? I think I, I am qualified to tell you. I will tell you this house was built on the blood and sweat of intercessors. Men who will just stay in containers at the back. In the houses of our of our pastors, they gather in clusters. Sometimes we don't have prayer point, but we just stay there because we know there's battle in front. We don't know the battle yet because our, our knowledge is limited, but we know there's battle in front. One time they came, they said, we are state government, we want to build a road and the road will pass through. Imagine, imagine this place where I'm preaching for now. They mapped it as a road and, and, and we left them and we began to pray and one day we came for midweek service they locked us out because they felt they were government but we stayed outside right there and we began to pray because the Lord said touch not my anointed do my prophet no harm we are still here. The people that enacted that, we are still looking for them up till now. Some of them, their, their journeys was cut short because you don't do certain things. Hear me, child of God. When you operate at a realm, you make your enemies, when they see you, they take off. Ah, I say, God has fought my battle sometimes. I will go back to him and say, Father, have mercy. And if it's on my account, this person is experiencing this. Just show him a little mercy. Because when God fights, he fights dirty. He said, who is it whose blood, whose garment is soaked in blood? Who is it that comes from Edom? You play with the power of prayer. You don't understand the power, the potential we sit on. When we begin to pray in tongues, demons scamper. Devils are taken aback. They are wondering what are these people doing? A city set on a hill. Whether we become the object of attack of a million army, we know that he that is with us is greater than he that is in the world. We know that we are hidden in Christ and Christ is hidden in God. What that means, let me tell you the revelation of that. What that means is that if you want to touch me, you go take permission from God and he will give you access. Then you, you will say, you are giving, he's giving you access to touch Jesus. Ah, yeah. And then you go to Jesus and you ask for permission and Jesus will give you access before you can get to me. What I can tell you is that access is denied because I am hidden in Christ, Christ in God. Somebody reached out to me recently. And she said, they said, I went for a mammogram. They said, they suspect, it's a suspect cancer. And I told them, not my body. They've gone for biopsy. They say, Pastor Jude, I'm in faith. That's how to speak in this season. It doesn't matter the reality. Shake it off. It doesn't matter what they're saying. When God needed to, to confront the city of Egypt, he raised a man called Moses. 
See, you don't need numbers. Only cowards flock. Eagles don't move in flock. They, 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 they fly solo. You know why? They don't know what the divine has put in them. Hear me, child of God. You, there are times in this season we are calling for community. We live in tribes. But when it comes to darkness, you cannot drive your car at night with another man's headlamp. No matter how the headlamp of my brother, Pastor Kayode is. I can't tell him. Pastor Kayode, be in front of me. My own headlamp is gone. I will drive behind you. The moment he stays in front of me, his car will cast a shadow on the light because that light is meant for him. I'm telling you this season, you will build your own fire. You will build your own altar. You will build your own strength. When your children come, they will join you. It will become a bonfire. I'm, I'm encouraging couples. Find time to pray together. You don't know what happens when you pray together. The Bible says if two of you shall agree upon a thing, I can testify. 13 years of marriage, there is no one thing that I've held wife's hands with my wife to agree on that the Lord did not hear us. May the Lord hear you in the day of your trouble. May the Lord, the name of the Lord of Jacob defend you in the name of Jesus. I really want us to pray. Let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow, let it flow. Oh, let it flow right here, right now. Let it flow, let it flow. 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 Oh, let it flow. Oh, let it flow right here, right now. As the river flows. And as the river flows. It begins to bring every death into life. Life giving river. It's the life giving river. Oh, let it flow right here, right now. And as the river flows, as the river flows, it begins to bring every death into life. It begins to bring every death into life. It's life giving river. The life giving river. Oh, let it flow right here, right now. Pray, pray in the spirit for 30 seconds. Da -da 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 -da. Ta -da 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 Ta la 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 Bring the spirit. Test the seconds. Ta la 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 one more minute. la 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 So how do you shine your light this season? You know, when God needed light to shine in Egypt, I said he sent Moses. He looked at Babylon. Babylon was becoming a very great nation. He went to trouble Israel. So he can pick some young men carrying lights. He took them to Babylon. 
It's a seventh. He said, this number of years you'll be here. So that you can shine. They went there in the guise of slavery. But God's intention was different. It seemed like God was punishing Israel for a bit. But even in the midst of that seeming punishment, God was establishing a new order in one of the greatest nations in the world. So some of you are listening to us online. You were one of us. And you were sent out there. You went in the guise of IT. You went in the guise of medicine. But what you did not know is that you went there as a light bearer. So you can't allow the system. Because when Daniel, when as a, a be, be, Bethesda, Hazariah, Michel, Abednego, when these guys, they arrived, they began to school them. They first changed their names. They said, you, what's your name? He said, Bethesda. He said, you shall be called Daniel. You, what's your name? He said, Azariah. You shall be called Shadrach. He said, what's your name? He said, Hananiah. He said, you shall be called Meshach. He said, you, what's your name? Abed. They just altered their names. But these guys understood. They knew who they were. So when they brought the hidden food to them, they said, no. 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 And the Enoch said, you want to kill me? Shephak Pamini, you want to kill me? This is what is recommended for you to eat. I don't know who they are telling in your place of work. That something is recommended for you. But by the message of God, anything that sponsors the altar that is trying to cause you to compromise, we curse it. We pass judgment over it in the name of Jesus Christ. Daniel and his friends told the Enoch, no, we can't eat this type. Give us this one. Give us vegetables. And the man said, you will be looking bad. I don't know who they have told that if you don't do what everybody's doing in this industry, ah, you will not succeed. Is it not Lagos? Don't come and do church here. They said, sir, ma binu, sir. don't be angry. We cannot. Then I said, test us. Ah. They said, test us. Test us. After a certain number of days, if the other people you are giving this food, if they look better than us, if they speak better than us, if their grades are better than our own, then we'll eat your food. But if not, you leave us the way we are. That is a people who understood their identity. No wonder God sent them as light bearers. They were young. They were princes, but they were not spoiled. They knew their heritage. They knew who they were. So when they tested them, the Bible says that they came out 10 times better. When you are tested at work, when you are given that special task, may you not disgrace heaven. May you not be a disgrace to kingdom because you will put in the works and the Lord will multiply it. The Bible says that these guys who were eating beans and vegetables, they were 10 times better. It was not just look. Their, their cognitive learning was 10 times better. Their abilities were better. Later in life, they proved it. All the other boys that went to the school of sorcery with them could not interpret dreams, but Daniel could. All the other people bowed, but Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they said no, they will not bow. Listen, there is something about standing out. A city set on a hill is not, does not flock. It stands out. Everybody can, but I have a different template. Everybody may compromise, but my own, my, my own law is different because I come from a house. I come from a kingdom. We don't cut corners. They say, come, take this invoice, inflate it because you need to sort out some people at the back. You say, sorry, sir. If my giving you back your invoice will make me start. It's okay to start for a season because the value I bring, I will give you value. You, you will understand why you have to pay what you pay. But as for all, as for this, I will not eat this food. So when it was time, they were the light that shone in Babylon. Do you remember Philip? The Bible says in the book of Acts that Philip went to the city of Samaria and he began to do the work of God. In verse 8, I think that's at 5, the Bible says, and the whole city was full of joy because Philip came. You don't know what you carry. And Paul and Silas went into Ephesus and a time came. They came to look for Paul and Silas in the house of a man called Jason. And when they came, Paul and Silas had left. They grabbed Jason. But this is the testimony. Oh, my brother, listen now. They were going by. They said, these are the men that have turned this city upside down. You can't be in a company and you fit in so well. We don't even know you're a believer. Come on. Something is not right somewhere. 
You must stick out like a sore thumb. You, in excellence, you are excellent. But when it comes to compromise, you stand out. They won't say all of them are the same. All of us are not the same. There's a wealth we don't need in this commission. We don't need it. A wealth that you have to, you have to usurp somebody. You have to defame somebody. You have to destroy another person to make that money. Keep the tithe to yourself. I tell you the truth. The truth is, you cannot go and collect the entire livelihood of a, an 80-year-old woman and you say you are collecting your rights as a young Nigerian. You are a fraud star. You are not collecting anything. Nothing was taken from you. Go and work. Daniel said, we will not compromise. We know greatness is on our inside. In due season, it will come forth. We will not cut corners. What are you putting in that your product as a manufacturer? What are you advertising? Is the, are you sure everything you are putting in that product has the health benefits? Or you have put in something that you have introduced just to, just to optimize your profit? At the detriment of your consumers. Integrity is, integrity is advertising the right thing. What do you exaggerate in that your report? Daniel said to them, we will not. We will not. We may be in your country, but we don't talk like you. Ah, I'm a Hebrew of Hebrews. They said to Daniel, you cannot pray to anybody but to the king. The man opened his window. I may be your slave temporarily. It doesn't mean I've forgotten where I came from. I come from Zion. I come from Zion. And the Bible says three times he prayed. So how do you stand out as light? It's what I've been saying. The first point. Be a God representative on earth. If they are looking for who to say the truth in your company, they should come to you. Did they say, let your MD say, um, Bola, come to my office. I know that if there's anybody that will tell me the true position of things, you are the one. Uh -huh. You are a city set on a hill. Be a God representative. Then everybody's panicking. Somebody just collapsed in the office. They are looking for ambulance. That's the safety procedure. But can you ask them, is it okay if I say a word of prayer? Because just before the ambulance comes, perhaps there's an angel there that can interrupt the angel of death that's about to take that individual. Be a God representative. Oh, they said, this be the man that troubled the land of Ephesus. This be the man that turned the city upside down. No wonder when Jesus came in Matthew chapter 4, they said the land of Zebulon, the land of Naphtali, Galilee by the sea, a people that sat in darkness have seen a great light. When you show up in that company, when they pick up your CV, when you begin to walk week one, week two, week three, they should say, a people that sat in darkness have seen a great light. The light is not Jesus this time. Because Jesus, when he was living, said, you are the light of the world. They will say, Mecca is there. Omoya is there. Aki is there. Therefore, light signs here. The second thing about being a city on the hill is that you are not indifferent to the hearts of other people. That's why we are saying what we are saying today. None of them we are lacking. You are not indifferent to the pain of others. One of our staff came to us and said, you know, um, my child, the, the basic medical is no longer covering it. My child is, is experiencing something. And all of that long story. Long and short, sir, can you give me a salary advance? So, so, so amount. I'll be taking it away from my salary every month. I wanted to ask, how much do you earn that I'll be taking this thing away from your salary? What you are asking for, if I take some of our brothers in front here for lunch, I will spend it. Why should I give it to you and be demanding it from you every month? Number two, I said, you care for hurting people. Reappraise what you are paying those that are working for you. You know, sometimes people will say, nobody have, they've not increased my own wage. Maybe your increasing theirs will be a prophetic statement. Show mercy. Show mercy. Is there someone you can write off their debt? Show mercy. 
If there's someone that needs to offset a, 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 a hospital bill and you can afford it, show mercy. In times of famine like this, people hold back. But this is a time to scatter abroad. Cast your bread upon the waters after many years, days you'll find it. Number three, I said you will love your brother. I love that, I love that text in John. First John, I think we should look at that. Levaroni. Pepe pepe li. Raka kakaka. First John chapter 2 verse 9 to 11 it says, Anyone who claims to be in the light but hates his brother is still in the darkness. Whoever loves his brother lives in the light. And there's nothing in him to make him stumble. But whoever hates his brother is in the, is in the darkness and walks around in the darkness. He does not know where he's going because the darkness has what? Blinded him. The Lord called Cain. Cain. Omoyada. Where's your brother? He said, he said, am I my brother's keeper? Not only was his action callous, his response was insensitive. It would have been a good time to ask for mercy. Say, God, I was enraged. Have mercy on me. Maybe his punishment, you know when God pronounced his punishment, he said, say, my punishment is too much for me. Many of us are asking for mercy from someone. But you can't even dispense mercy in your own immediate environment. Sometimes, mercy is in kind words. Don't give them anything, but be kind with your words. Consider every human as a human person first. Before they were your drivers. Before they were your, I don't know why I'm staying around domestic help today. Before they were your staff. Oga bank manager. It's not by washing this woman, insulting his father, her father, insulting her husband, and calling her a fool that she would make that your deposit. Some people have been stripped of their self-worth in the places where they work because of the kind of labans they work for. No kind words. Are you praying tongues? Have you forgotten the prayer of Jesus? When he was teaching them the model, model of prayer, he said, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. They came to Jesus once. They said, how many times can I forgive my brother when he offends me? He said, 70 times 7. Some of us today, when we go, one of the actions you will carry out, as you step out, you send that text. Say, I let go. I forgive you. Some people, they offend you and they have been begging for three years. Are you God? Come on. Three years. Love your brother. That's the third point. Love your brother. The, 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 the fourth one is, share, to be a city on the, to shine, you must share your faith. I told them in first service about the illustration that Pastor Rolake gave. My time is up. I think I need to stop now. Pastor Rolake was teaching us during the uh, midweek service, uh, Richard. When you don't come to Richard, you miss a lot, by the way. Just, just saying, just putting it out there. Right? She, she showed us a video of the World Economic Forum of a witch who is a climate activist and earned a seat in the World Economic Forum in a particular panel discussion. And I don't know till date how she got, she got the permission to do her enchantment in open public space. If you watch the video, she put her hands like this and she began to chant. She chanted for a few minutes. I thought she would stop there. She turned. Those of us watching it on Wednesday, we were like, I had only seen the part where she was chanting in social media. I had not seen the full video. She went from each world leader to the other. And she was touching their head, laying hands on them. Impacting her, her sorcery on them. Yet you, Oga CEO, you say it's unethical to start the board meeting by praying. You didn't know ethic when you were begging money. God has brought you now to the boardroom. And it is not that it is not your call. It is your, actually your call. It is your call. 
that when there's crisis, you are looking for someone to pray. But God never came into the center of what you were doing. It, being a city set on the hill, this woman went from, she didn't say it was what, oh, you see the video. She didn't say it was World Economic Forum. She was laying hands. And, and Pastor Olake told us, she had to investigate what this woman invested into her spiritual life. To be a spiritualist like her, I think she's from Brazil, they, you spend one year of fasting, denying yourself certain nutrition. You go through a ritual before you are made this. this see what she's doing. That is, can you see the background? Annual meeting, the last one I just had in Devos. She came in her full regalia. She didn't wear suits. And then we ask you, use the principles of Jesus. You say, no. God forbid, those people are not in this church. Hallelujah. So, we're saying that, the other, the other point is that you must share your faith. I gave a testimony, Pastor She shared with us that same Wednesday. In December, she had, a te she, has a, she had a problem that was very hard to unlock in a business that was about a billion euros or something. And it was obvious her team had goofed. And then she, she, she told her team, let us pray. Let us pray. God will make a way. I know that testimony well, like I said earlier, because she, she called me during that period. We, we all joined faith with her. She went back, and as she looked at the document, the Lord made a way. And she proposed it to her client. They said, give us some time. Let's go and think about it. And she went back to her place of prayer. Surprising to all of her colleagues, her senior colleagues and, and partners, this client came back and said, that way you said we should resolve that thing. It looks like a good way. We're going to go with it. So my point again is, why are you afraid to tell them that the Holy, some of you always like being politically correct. Something said, the Holy Spirit told me. If you don't like it, live with it. The Holy Spirit told me. Do you know how many times I've been on projects and the project is stuck? The project is stuck. Even in my earlier engineering days when we were doing designs, you don't know how you got yourself there. I'll just tell my colleagues, give me one night. They think I'm going to sit down with uh, AutoCAD. No! Yes, we do. We do the AutoCAD. We do all the, all the cards we need to do. But when you turn to the wall, you say, Lord, because my, my imprint is on this project, it cannot fail. And then you come back. The, God, the Lord gives you ideas. They say, how did you do it? They say, you know, something just told me. Read something. There's something I did not tell you before. Share your faith. Share your faith openly and disciple people in your faith. And finally, be counterculture. Give me Romans chapter 12 verse 2 in the message Bible. And I'll end with that. Because I'd like you to stand on your feet. You're going to hold a partner. And we're going to judge every hardship. We're going, to end, we're going to use the word of God to enthrone ourselves as city on the hill. Enforce it. And we're going to commit to God that as we go out there, we'll help people with the lights that we we'll carry. Well, have you seen Romans chapter 12? Can we read it? So here's what I want you to do. This, are, this is my closing charge on being a city on the hill. The Holy Spirit said, here's what I want you to do. God helping you. Did you hear that? Take your everyday ordinary life. You're sleeping, you're eating, you're going to work, and you're walking around life. And do what? And place it before God. As what? Embracing what God does for you. As what? As the best thing you can do for him. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even, without thinking. Instead, go on. Fix what? You fix your attention on God. You will be changed. How? From inside out. Readily recognize what he wants from you and do what? 
quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of what? Immaturity. What does God do? God brings out the best of you. Develops well-formed maturity in you. Rise on your feet. Let's pray. If you, if you came to church with someone, just hold their hands. If your neighbor looks friendly, hold their hands. If your neighbor looks like somebody that, that wants to pray for five minutes, hold their hands. Say, Lord, I, I know Nigeria is tough, but I, I create an exemption for myself. Today, I create an exemption for myself. Today, I create an exemption for my family. Today, I create an exemption for my family. The Bible says the land of Egypt experienced darkness, but there was no darkness in Goshen. The land of Egypt had frogs, but there was no frog in Goshen. I create a perimeter of Goshen around my business. I create a perimeter of Goshen around my life. Is somebody praying? I don't think I can hear you praying. We are, we are fasting. So this, this we can as well pray for five minutes. Brother, come in on it. Brother, close cover. Impelicatos. Brother, the cante. Sakatona Gaskeva. Elder de Lokoski. Frande Katene Magoko. Prata Takaga. The barrel of meal will not waste. My cruise will not run dry. Until Shiloh comes, I stand under the covenant of God. I decree this season, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want depression. You have nothing on me. Depression, you have nothing on me. Suicidal thoughts, you have no hold on me. I walk in light. I walk in light. I walk in light. I walk in light. My light shines in darkness. Darkness cannot overcome it. This is my moment. This is my time. My children, they are like well watered garden. They flourish. They flourish. The Lord maintains my love. This is my season. This is my moment. Make that say that prayer like you mean it. I commit to become light. Wherever I go, I dispense 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 light. The hand of God is upon me. The power of God is upon me. The might of God is with me. Lord, I come before you today. I begin to decree that when others are saying there's a casting down, we experience a lifting up. We pray for Nigeria. Send us help. Send us help. supernatural empowerment yes. that we may be bold and full of courage yes, 
to do the things that he will have us do in this season. So just join me and pray as we close. You know, when the disciples were in the upper room, yes. they, were, they were before the Holy Spirit came on them in the upper room. They were timid. They were discouraged. They were without power. So as we close this powerful session of all that Pastor Jude has, has uh, spoken of, and that we will be light, put your hand on your head. And believe God for his supernatural empowerment. Oh Lord, open up the heavens, oh God. Open up the heavens and change us today that we wouldn't be the same. Lord, we need the help of the Holy Spirit. We want to stand as light in darkness. Oh, are there no sons in Zion? How can a heathen stand at the World Economic Forum and speak over leaders? Kelly if you speak in tongues, lift up your voice and pray. For the fire of the Holy Spirit. That in the darkness we will shine as light. That we will be witnesses for Lord God Almighty. We hunger, we thirst for you in the dry and weary land. We hunger, we thirst for you in the dry and weary land. Walk forth your spirit, walk forth your spirit like water on dry ground. Baba, open the heavens over me. Baba, open the heavens over me. Open heavens, open heavens. Baba, open the heavens over me. Sing, Baba, oh, Baba. Open the 
Hallelujah. Let that be your prayer this week. We, we need that supernatural touch from God daily. Let it be your prayer. And may you dwell in his secret place. May you dwell in that place of fellowship with God in the name of Jesus.